We continue today <coughs> the reading of Saints of Raj by Adikva Das. We continue the story of Berangadas Babaji, chapter 17. And we'll back up to just one page before, page 284. I remind you that Karangadas Babaji was born <clears throat> uh, Tirendra Nata Chakravarti in a village outside of Calcutta. He went to Sanskrit studies in Calcutta before taking shelter of his, of his guru and then shifting to Vrindavan. Today we take up the part of his story where Ramakrishna Das Baba has shifted to Vrindavan. This is in 1924. And they begin to live together in Vrindavan Research Institute. Das Babaji also began to live in Vrindavan in a cottage in Shaha Janapur Ki Bhagachi, very near Daoji Ki Bhagachi, which is the Vrindavan Research Institute. While living there, every evening after returning from Madukari, he used to read out Radharasa Sudaniti to the Kalpaturus around his cottage. One day, he returned late after Madhukari. Because it had become dark, he went inside his cottage and lay down. Soon after, he heard someone knocking at the door. As soon as, soon as he came out, a voice coming from the adjoining tree said, Garangadasa, will you not read Radharasa Sudaniti today? Garangadas replied, Maharaj, I am sorry, I returned late from Madhakuri. It is now dark and you know I have no lamp or candle. No, no, go inside and see. There is a candle and a matchbox in a corner of your room, said the Kalpatru. Karanga Das went inside. He actually found a candle and a matchbox there. Immediately, he lighted the candle and read out Radharasa Sudhimiti. As enjoined by Pandita Baba, as instructed by Pandita Baba, Gauranga Das Baba started the Katha of Vrindavan Mahimamrita in front of his ashram in Daoji Ki Bajichi. His Katha was always appreciated by the learned and the illiterate, the sadhus and the non-sadhus alike. But there was now an additional attraction to it, in it. The Ashta Sattvika Bhava constantly attended upon him at the time of Katha. As he recited, 
As he recited the slokas relating to the beauty of the blissful spiritual Vrindavan and the Leela of Radha Krishna, tears constantly flowed from his eyes. The Leela, he described, sometimes became manifest in him. He would be completely lost in it, and the Pata would remain suspended till he was again able to speak. Mahatmas and the Bhaktas from all over Braj used to come to listen to his Kata. The supernatural character of the Kata can be understood from some stories which some aged people who had the good fortune of tending, attending <coughs> the Kata even now relate with warmth and devotion. <clears throat> One day, while the kata was going on, people saw white flowers of attractive shape falling from the sky on the site of the kata. Everyone looked with surprise at Pandit Baba, as if to ask him, to explain the phenomenon. Pandit Baba said, don't be surprised. Gauranga Das is delivering kata, and the gods are showering flowers at him. At the time of the kata, a serpent used to come and lie near the boundary, the boundary wall of the ashram. It crawled away as soon as the kata was over. So maybe I may be the comment. <laughs> So it is said in Vrindavan, there is Karpatal, and also any script, any like a living entity, even animal, and uh, some kind of this also snake, they are like uh, devotees. So actually, they are not ordinary living entity. The previous life, they did so much uh, bhakti, like a pious scripti. And then some uh, divine arrangement or offense, we don't know. But some or other, they are born some specific living entity in Braja. So therefore, this kind of thing is happening. It is surprising, but also not surprising, because all living entity in Braja is like Vaishnava, like a devotee of the Lord. Dogs and cats. And yes, even cows. dogs and cats. And uh, it's not a book, but I think Navadvip uh, in Saint uh, mentioned one day Gurudev uh, tell disciple, Please call all dog in Navadvip. I want to feed all dog, <laughs> dogs in Navadvip. <laughs> and disciple was was wondering what Guru Dev is talking about. Then, but uh, but uh, disciple told asking Guru Dev, what can I ask Guru Dev to the dog? I don't speak dog's words. <laughs> You don't need to worry, just to inf go in front of a dog and uh, pay obeisance, hold the hand, 
my Gurudev invite you to our feast. Please kindly attend the feast at such and such day, such and such time. Please kindly, please come. All invite my Gurudev. Then the disciple went to each dogs all over the Navdevip. <laughs> but the disciple was a little bit wondering, is it really dog is coming to, to that feast? Because, you know, yeah. because we don't know they understood, understood or not. So, but they are preparing all feast. And then that day, all dog is coming like saint. And then devotees are like kind of, please come this way, please sit down this place. And then dog come and sit each place. Okay. And then, 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 then Prasad was served all the dog in our day. <laughs> At that time, Guru Dev's grandfather and grandmother was attending. I was very shocked. So this is a real story. In, and then Guru Dev was heard from grandmother. So, so this thing happening yeah. is not at all, you know, surprising. Yeah, actually. Yeah. So all living entity. So therefore, if if we are very divine, we have a divine nature. Then three can talk, talk to with us. Why don't you talk like today? Like you know, like Goranga, that's Vaj Maharaj. But uh, we are so much material. I'm so much material covered. We cannot realize it, but the reality is this in this book mentioned. Hmm. One of the branches of a Nima tree hung so low at the spot of the kata that it became dark a little before sunset, and the kata had to be stopped earlier. Every, everybody wished that the branch were not there. One day, when the kata was not going on, the branch fell by itself. <laughs> like any other Siddha Mahatma, Gauranga Das Babaji had supernatural powers to perform miracles. But he never wanted to use them. Sometimes, however, he was placed in a situation which compelled him to exercise those powers. Once he went to Calcutta for darshan of Gurudev, Gurudev asked him to speak on the power of Harinam at a function specially arranged by the elite of Calcutta. Speaking at length, on the supernatural powers of Harinam, he said, there is nothing that Harinam cannot do. It can even bring the dead back to life. In this connection, he gave the example of Sri Radharamana Charandasa Babaji, who once created great sensation in Calcutta by bringing back to life a Madhvarvi lady whose corpse was going to be cremated on the bank of the Ganga by chanting Harinam. Just when Karanga Dasababaji was saying this, 
the dead body of a bird fell before him from the branch of branch of a missing sentence, a tree. Did this prove what he was saying? He could see the challenge written upon the face of each one of the audience. He was deeply stirred. His reaction to the challenge was abnormal. While relating his experience in this connection, he once said to the author, Hmm. Usually, when I saw anyone in distress, I invoked the Lord. But this time, I did not invoke the Lord. I could not tolerate that Harinam should be disgraced like this. I said to myself, no, this can never happen. And I felt that automatically my heart went out to the bird and injected life into it. The bird fluttered and flew. The next day, the episode came out in the Kolkata newspapers. Someone <clears throat> reported it to Baba Maharaj, Ram Das Babaji. Baba Maharaj said to me reproachfully, trading in miracles? I apologized with folded hands and said, Baba, I could not help it because Harinam was going to be disparaged. As bidden by Gurudev, Baba had for some time started giving tiksha to people. He had many disciples. Sometimes in their hour of crisis, he could not refrain from using his power to help them. In my own case, an astrologer had predicted from my horoscope that my 43rd year would be fatal. But Baba told me, Kapoor, be fearless. Even if the father of Kala, the regent of death, comes, he will not be able to touch you. Kala came at the scheduled time, and I saw with my eyes and heard with my ears, how Baba turned him away. Perhaps it was because Baba took other missing page. Uh, perhaps it was uh, perhaps it was because Baba took other people's ailments upon himself that during this period began to remain ill. But whatever was the condition of his body, his internal condition always remained peaceful. Once, when Baba was ailing, I was sitting near him. What is aiding? 
he was sick, suffering with sickness. <laughs> Constantly, the, the thought plagued my mind. Why does a Siddha Purusha, like Baba, suffer at all? Baba could hear the question I had silently put to myself. He replied figuratively, <clears throat> Kapur, Ravi Takura has a song, which means a traveler traveling through a solitary place is frightened to see thick clouds suddenly gathering over the sky and lightning and thunder threatening his life. Ah, if only the traveler knew that behind the clouds Rasa dance was going on to the accompaniment of sweet and enchanting music and delectable peace reigned supreme. So the clouds are the material covering of the external body, the material body. And behind this, the external illness of Babaji, there's the, the dance, the rasa dance, mm -hmm. and the sweet and chanting music and peace in the soul of the devotee, of the Baba. Once, Baba had to be operated on the back for carbon. The doctor wanted to give him chloroform to make him sleep. But Baba said, you needn't bother about chloroform, doctor. <laughs> During the operation, you will do your work and I shall do mine. <laughs> I will not even know that you are what you are doing to my body. The doctor reluctantly performed the operation without chloroform. During the operation, Baba did not even once groan or whine. He was all the time in samadhi, absolutely unconcerned with the body. A devotee once said to Baba, Baba, your prayers have relieved so many people of their suffering. They have even dragged so many out of the jaws of death. Why don't you pray for yourself? Missing line. Missing line. We aim <clears throat> always at the happiness of Radha Krishna, not at our own happiness. Why should we trouble them for such trifles as the suffering of the body? Mm. So, this also may comment. <coughs> Dear devotee or pure devotee is always pray for others, but not to pray for himself or herself. Because pure devotee is so humble. <coughs> like a selfless. If, say, pray for something means kind of, say, little bit uh, some 
kind of what is say difficult to say in ordinary people pray for my benefit. We all benefit. <coughs> yeah. We all benefit. Yeah. And uh, it seems like kind of Selfish. trading. Ah, okay. Trading. So therefore, pure devotee does not pray for himself anything. I'm see Gurudev also. Gurudev does not pray for himself. I've seen. But I pray, always pray for our others. But uh, we pray for Gurudev. You know? But we also, we are, we, if we are pure, we don't pray for myself or ourselves. That is this extraordinary symptom of pure devotee. That's it. This is kind of one of, uh, I feel kind of sharanagati. It's completely surrendering. And uh, because, like, this is kind of birth of Tonati Pipas. Tonata Pisu Nietzsche, Taro Riva Sahishinana. He did not ask anything for kind of water. Or if, I say, if so much sunshine, but the shade gives shade, shelter of the people. And people want to have some fruits or twigs provide freely. But uh, that person did not say anything for, did not ask anything from others. This is a kind of extraordinary symptom of pure devotee. This is uh, this <laughs> Baba also exhibiting this pure purity of his heart. Mm. Maybe another quality of the pure heart. The perfected soul. not only does not pray for himself, but in his perfection is always praying for all others because he's in full unity, full spiritual oneness with God and with other souls. So that every feeling he has Every wish becomes projected to all others. There's no need for special effort. The, the, the purified soul is in constant prayer for, for all and everything, for the world. There's no distinction between mm -hmm. jivas, no distinction between other souls. Mm. He's loving all of them yeah. equally. Paradoka Duchi. Mm. You are devotee thinking, other suffering is my, my suffering. So, therefore, so much compassion. Last time you mentioned, Kong is. Oh, is it? Yes. With, with yeah, with and uh, passion is suffering. Like uh, this is the uh, nature of Sadhu. Mm -hmm. Do we have a book, Sadhu? Yeah, I was just looking. We start at 267. So I think I responded. I think we're okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. I can read. Do we have uh, somebody translating? Yeah, two people are translating Madhuri Rasa and. Um, Japanese and then the grandma. Thank you for the translation. Thank you for translation. Um, so we continue. <clears throat> but although Baba never prayed 
for himself in critical moments his Gurudev always came to his help. So only the other perfected soul can see his suffering and feel his suffering with him. Gurudev knows the heart of the disciple. Hmm. And Gurudev knows the suffering of the disciple. Hmm. Then always Gurudev came and to help hmm. the disciple. Hmm. Once, <clears throat> when one of his molar teeth was extracted, the wound became septic, was infected. The swelling went on, <coughs> increasing until it became impossible for him to swallow anything. One of his disciples named Ramdas Baba, Babaji, he immediately sent a telegram asking the disciple to bring him to Calcutta. He was taken to Calcutta. The best surgeons of Calcutta were consulted. They said that the malady, the sickness, had reached the stage in which operation was not possible. Mm -hmm. Then Ramdas Babaji took him to Navadvi. He lay him before the statue of his guru, Sri Radharamana Charan Charanadas Babaji in Samajibani and said, will the stories of the miracles of your mercy now remain confined to books or the people will see them with their eyes? <laughs> Here is an opportunity, Gauranga, is your own. The opportunity is your own, Garant. Wow. Do with him what you like. Mm. It's very strange that the, the devotee challenges the guru. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's not a challenge. It's kind of, kind of, kind of, what is it? Uh, it's sad way of talking. You know, like Western world, we say directly, but the Indian way or Eastern way or sad way is not to, not to say directly, please do this. Mm -hmm. You know, that I feel this is not, not challenging. It's a kind of different way to, to, to ask Guru Dev, please help. Mm. But maybe Western devotee may say directly, every day, please help me. Mm. <laughs> it's a way to show respect for his glory, to yes, glorify yes, him. Yes, yes, yes. That means let us see your glory yes, instead yes, of yes. it staying in books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The kind of, you know, not challenging, but kind of, yeah, that's right. This kind of different way to glorify Guru Dev and Guru, you know, try to help Guru, you know, try to ask help to Guru Dev. Mm -hmm. In Virapak Sumanjali first verse also, not direct glorification of Rupa Goswami, Rupa Manjali, but some joking way, very intimacy way, then very touching. Uh, mm -hmm. These things I feel. Actually, this is more tasteful, more taste is coming. Okay. Yes. Uh, just then, Karangadas Babaji saw Radharamana Charana das, Dasadeva standing by his side and saying, Gaura, what has happened to you? Baba replied angrily, don't you see what has happened? 
<laughs> then Radha Ramana, Ramana Charana Das gently rubbed his hand on his cheek. Immediately, the swelling burst and mucus ran out of it like a stream. The operation was performed and Garangadas became all right. So actually, maybe many people may not know, also I may not know, but this is Radha Raman Charandas Baba is very great thing. So he he did he was so kind of he had so much power and he did so much miracle in this book mentioned one day near the river they tried to burn the dead body and then Radha Charandas Baba was was came to to see the people what's happening and then yeah now my my such and such die now we are going to be you know burn the dead body then Radha Radha this Radha Raman Charandas yeah, Baba was start chanting. After it died. Yeah, after death. And you know, before just burning about his body or her body, I, I forgot. And then he start chanting Sankirtan. Then just the dead with the dead body become weak. On the fire. Just before. Just before, I guess. <clears throat> And then, and then, after a while, again, that person, you know, again, you know, divide, after some time, he again gone dead. And people asking, you have so much power, why, you, why cannot to divide this, this person? You already divide. So this is because this is destiny. This is this is is not the right to change this person's destiny. Okay. Was, hmm. This means someone is not destiny. Hmm? Yeah, because you know more supreme power. I don't know Yamaraj or you know or in a vision, we don't know, but you know that already some person is destined to die, then destiny means yes, dying. Yes, yes, yes. But he show us the power of Harina. So this is you know, this is so this this Radha Raman Charam Das Baba is so so powerful person, even Kapo. <laughs> wrote his book also. So this is very, uh, and that his I have this biography. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Yes. And then that disciple is this Radha, uh, Radha Ramadas Babaji. Hmm. So therefore, this Gorangadas Babaji was grand disciple of, of this Radha Raman Charan Das Babaji. So that means, grand, you know, say, Grand disciple is more sometimes more dear to Paramaguru Dev. Yeah, than Guru Dev. Sometimes. Or you know, or or another words, Paramaguru Dev sometimes give special mercy unto the grand disciple. Hmm. This is also kind of proof. But it needs help of Guru Dev. Through the Guru Dev, we can get the mass of Parama Guru Dev. Hmm. So tomorrow is a very auspicious, very auspicious day. Yeah. Tomorrow is our Sorry. Parama Guru Dev's appearance day. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Appearance day. Yes. So we want to pray the mass of hmm. our dear Parama Guru Dev. Also, we want to pray the mass of our dear. Good day. Thank you.
So this is the story is very nice. Story. Very, very, auspicious. very, very auspicious in this occasion. <laughs> For 35 years, <coughs> Baba kept on moving from place to place in Braj. But towards the end, he began to live in his spiritual uncle's ashram called Radharama Nivasha in Ramanareti. Brindam, where his samadhi now exists. He liked this place particularly because of the kapaltus, the nimna, the nima trees in it, with whom he used to be in loving communion always. He talked with them, sung songs to them, and read out Radharasa Sudhaniti and other holy books relating to the Leela of Radha Krishna to them. In turn, they loved him with all their heart. They could not bear his absence from the ashram for long, nor could he remain without them for a long time. Baba did not allow anyone to climb the trees in his ashram or even pluck their twigs or leaves. But once it so happened that he asked one of his disciples, Manora, Man, Manohar Baba, to tie up the lower branch of a tree with the upper branch as it was too low and obstructed the passage into the ashram. After some time, Manoha Baba tied the two branches. Baba was at that time in his room. He did not know that the branches had been tied. But as soon as they were tied, he began to feel excruciating pain in his chest. And he exclaimed, Manohar, Manohar. Manohar came running. Have you tied the branches, Baba asked? Yes, Baba. Go and untie them at once. As soon as Manohar had untied the branches, the pain in Baba's chest subsided. The next morning, when Baba was taking a stroll in the ashram, he saw that in place of the tree of which the branch was tied, there stood a beautiful young boy radiating angelic light from his face and saying with tears in his eyes, even you will tie me. Baba also broke into tears. He bowed down to the boy and apologized. <clears throat> Can we explain this to the boy? <laughs> this idea, I could not explain. <laughs> if you could only speculate because I heard some malicious great souls taking form of trees in Holy mm -hmm. That's what it is. Wait, the boy could be the tree. I don't know. I just I don't have the only spirit. I thought yes. Yeah, that also could be. Then Baba Baba Ji does the love to the boy. Mm -hmm. And this is a, I, 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 I feel this is a, this, this person is actually kind of, you know, 
you know, to be, but he appeared in person. This is, a, but a, I, this kind of, I don't know, yeah, <laughs> difficult to explain. Garamedas <clears throat> G. Abadi again fell seriously ill in 1951. His disciple, Dr. G. N. Vyas, the famous physician of Agra, took him to his nursing home for treatment. But his condition continued to deteriorate. In the last stage, when no hope was left for his survival, he brought him back to Vrindavan. When the doctor was bringing him to Vrindavan in his car, it was about six o'clock in the morning, and Gaurangadas was altogether senseless. At that time, Ram Das Babaji was doing his morning service in his ashram in Calcutta with the help of an attendant. The attendant wanted, suddenly he became meditative. The attendant, want, the attendant wanted to draw his attention to the remaining rituals when he exclaimed, You don't know. Garangadas wants to go before me. I will not let him go. From that very moment, Garangadas' condition improved and he became all right. This is really amazing. Yeah, that's incredible. And actually, you know, if son or daughter die before mother or father is is not very good actually one day i think rama abatara one day one one person's son or daughter die and then go to go to the the king's place mm -hmm. Why my son or daughter die? That means you 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 have problem. You know you are doing some kind of un, un what I say unlawful kind of because you know some kind of king behave misbehave. Therefore, therefore, a kind of you know children die before father and mother. That kind of criticism is. It's kind of a story there. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, you know, so this is Ramadas Babaji, Guru Dev. Is, he does not want to, his disciple to pass away before him. And his special power and stop it. No, you cannot go before me. And this is also mercy. This is amazing, actually. I'm sorry, I, I could not. <laughs> no, sorry, no. In 1953, <clears throat> one day, Ramadas Babaji got up at 2 a.m. and called his disciples. He said to them, My call has come. <coughs> I'm going. Perform Kirtan. He started Kirtan. Kirtan was in full swing when all of a sudden he exclaimed, Radharama, and left his body to, to meet Gurudev Sri Radharaman Charanadas Deva in transcendental Vrindavan. It was Krishna Chaturdasi of the month of Agrahayana when Ramadas Babaji 
passed away in Calcutta. The same day, Taranga Das Babaji exclaimed in Vrindavan, all is gone, all is gone. And from that day, he began to remain in a state of half samadhi, which turned into full samadhi on the Shukla Ekadashi of the same month when he left the body to meet his Gurudev and Param Gurudev, Sri Radharaman Charanadasa, in blissful Vrindavan, and to assist them in the Prema Seva loving service of Sri Radha and Sri Krishna. Here ends the story of Karamedas Bhakti. I think Gurudev may meet this Ramadas Babaji Maharaj if I my remembrance is correct. Is it right, Gurudev? Right. I took uh, his darshan when he is doing kirtan. From his eyes, tears are coming like a shower, wow. not drop. He was so nice about Kirtanya. He has a 50 person group. He comes to Munger and Brindavan. His Kirtan was very high class. And he sings standing. That time, no mic and nothing. And he's singing and so much ecstasy you cannot believe. I took darshan of Ram Das Babaji, Gorang Das Babaji. By the grace of my grandfather. <laughs> This was after fifties, they are there. Yeah. What is the time in we continue or yeah, continue. Stop in if it is possible. And this next chapter. Is I don't know, maybe one of the first Western Baba, mm. the story. Then we continue with the story, chapter 28 of <clears throat> Sri Krishna Prema. Sri Krishna Prema. Ronald Nixon was born on May 10, 1898, in a religious family of England. He passed BA honors in English literature from the Cambridge University. His religious learning, leaning, was apparent even while he was a student. After passing BA honors, he applied himself seriously to the study of Buddhism, Christianity, and theosophy. But when the First World War broke out, he joined the Royal Air Force. Yeah. Buddhism again. Can you repeat this line? After passing BA honors, he applied himself seriously to oh. the study of Buddhism, Christianity, and Theosophy. Who? 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 This? 
Uh, Krishna, Pre Krishna Prem is studying this. Uh -huh. Buddhism, Christianity, theosophy, uh -huh. kind of philosophy and theology together. Mm. This is also from Igunan, Gurudev. Uh -huh. Krishna Prem. Krishna Prem from Igunan. Uh -huh. Born 1898. Mm. Mm -hmm. When the German army formations, <clears throat> now in the First World War, when the first German army formations were pouring into German-occupied Belgium and preparing for a fresh attack, the RAF, the Royal Air Force, was ordered to bombard them. A number of pilots, along with Nixon, along with Krishna Prem, flew in their bomber planes toward Belgium. But the German fighter planes were wary. They chased the RAF planes. All the RAF planes were destroyed and their pilots killed. Nixon's fate would have been the same, but for the intervention, but for the intervention of a supernatural power that caught hold of his wrist and took the plane high, very high, and turned it backwards. As it turned backwards, he lost consciousness. When he regained consciousness, he found himself in a military hospital near London. While he was convalescing in the hospital, several times he felt in a half-conscious state that someone was telling him, your life has been saved by a supernatural power. You can go and search it out in India. The supernatural power not only saved his life, but it gave it a new direction. He, <coughs> he began to look for an opportunity to go to India <coughs> and delve into the secrets of the divine or the supernatural. Providentially, Dr. Janendra Natta Chakravarti, the vice chancellor of the Lucknow University, was at that time in London. He was looking for a suitable person for the post of lecturer in English in Lucknow University. He was very much impressed by Nixon, not only because of his brilliance and scholarship, but also, and perhaps especially, because of his interest in Indian philosophy, religion, and culture. He gladly offered the post to him. Nixon joined the Lucknow University. He lived with Dr. Janendra Chakravarti and his wife, Monika Devi. Monika Devi was a highly educated and cultured lady. She was also deeply religious. She was impressed by Nixon's sincerity, sincerity of purpose and genial nature. She showered all her affection upon him and began to treat him as her son. She called him Gopala. Nixon called her Ma. 
Nixon continued his search for the divine. Since he was interested in Buddhism, he learned Pali and read the books of the Buddhist religion in the original. He also practiced meditation according to them. But this did not give him satisfaction. Therefore, he turned to Vedanta. He learned Sanskrit and studied the Upanishads, the Gita, and the Bhagavata. The result was that he turned more and more towards Krishna until he accepted him as his Ishta, that is, the Lord he adored and worshipped. This was bound to happen because of his penetrating intelligence and deep spiritual insight. But the most important factor that ultimately veered him round the feet of Krishna was the company of Monika Devi. So, so what do you mean veer? Veered means steered him, turned him and steered him around the feet of Krishna. Uh -huh. Guided him towards Krishna. Okay. This was the company of Monika Devi. Outwardly, Monika Devi was an ultra-modern lady. <coughs> she had traveled with her husband in Europe, America, and a number of other countries. She was well acquainted with Western etiquette. In social gatherings and parties at her home, which were a regular feature of her husband's social life, the way in which she played the hostess, going from table to table, laughing and cracking jokes and making the party go with her scintillating repartees, her exciting responses, one could easily mistake her for a Western lady. But she had a mystic personality, which baffled the eyes of ordinary people who were used to accepting the surface appearance. It was possible to get a glimpse of her real personality by the way in which she responded to Bengali kirtans or Hindi bhajans, especially relating to Krishna and his lila. She listened to them with astonishing warmth and tears constantly coursed down her cheeks. At such moments, one could not help feeling that she was a denizen of the deep, a resident of the deep, a citizen of an utterly different world. Her real self could not escape the keen eyes of Nixon. He observed that in parties at her home, Sometimes she suddenly disappeared and retired to her room. He wanted to know the secret of her sudden disappearances. One day, there was a special party at her house. In the midst of the music that was going on, Nixon saw her suddenly rushing to her room. He quietly followed her from a distance. When he peeped into the room, he saw that she was sitting in a corner, motionless and unconscious. When she came out, after about half an hour or so, her eyes were wet 
and an inconceivable peace seemed to radiate from her face. Nixon said with folded hands like one who had committed an offense, Ma, your Gopala has today stealthily peeped into your secret treasure. But has the son no claim upon the treasure of his mother? Why did you keep it hidden from me so far, Ma? Affectionately touching his chin, she said, since you have already peeped into it, I shall tell you everything about it. But not just now. <clears throat> the next day, she called her Nixon to her room when no one else was there and said, Gopala, you now you know that behind the body is the Atma. When the Atma is awakened, one is completely changed. Then one goes to Paramatma. Shri Bhagavan, and embraces his feet. This has started happening in my life. She added, you know that my husband is not only an educationist, but also a philosopher and a leading theosophist. I was also interested in theosophy. But theosophy did not satisfy us. Then both of us turned to Vaishnavism. I went to Vrindavan and took initiation from Acharya, Sri Palakrishna Goswami of Radharaman Temple. Since then, I have been absorbed in Krishna Prema Sadhana. I want to keep my sadhana a closely guarded secret. But Krishna is so naughty that time or no time, he pulls me near him whenever he wishes. At that time, a light emanates from his feet, which makes me unconscious of my body and of the world outside. I do not do anything. It is he who pulls me and drowns me in the ocean of his ambrosial presence and company. Nixon's heart was kindled with a new hope and a new light. He said, Ma, why not set me also on the sweet path of Krishna Prem? Ma said, you can now surely set your foot on the path of Krishna Prem because you are already disillusioned with Buddhism and your study of the Upanishads and the Gita has made you familiar with the basic principles of Hinduism. Nixon started his bhakti sadhana under the guidance of Monika Devi. Soon after, Jan Janandra Chakravarti shifted to Varanasi as vice chancellor of the Banaras Hindu University. Nixon could not stay on in Lucknow. He also accepted the post of professor of English in the Benares Hindu University on a salary much lower than what he was getting at Lucknow. But he was so popular in Lucknow that as soon as the professors of the university, the students and the others came to know about this, they started coming to him in groups to persuade him not to leave Lucknow. The reasons for his popularity were his extraordinary brilliance, his repartees in social gatherings, his total absence of selfishness and the slightest trace of pretense, 
is informal and unargumentative conversation, its faculty of summing things up and reaching a convincing conclusion, and above all, his disciplined way of life and love for India and Indian philosophy, <clears throat> religion, and culture. But no amount of persuasion could move him from his decision. He joined the new post in the Banaras Hindu University. He found the religious atmosphere of Banaras much more congenial to him and his bhakti sadhana under the guidance of Monika Devi went undisturbed. <clears throat> One day, he said to Monika Devi, Ma, I have decided to take Vaishnava Samyasa. That is a nice idea, said Ma. I've also decided to take Sanyasa Diksha from you. I'm a householder, she said. How can I initiate you in Sanyasa? <laughs> I do not know all that, replied Nixon. You will have to give Sanyasa Diksha to me. Ma kept quiet for a while, then said, All right, I will give Sanyasa Diksha. She went to Vrindavan, first obtained Samyasa Diksha herself from Acharya Balakrishna Goswami, and then gave it to Nixon. After Sanyasa, she was named Yashoda Ma. Nixon was named Krishna Pen. Who could believe that Monika Devi? born and bred in the lap of luxury, an aristocrat to the fingertip, and went every two years to England, had become a sannyasi, and shaved her head. Indeed, she was a lady who had to be seen to be believed, and Krishna Prem was no less a marvel. He was perhaps the first European who became a Vaishnava, exchanged his English dress for the ochre-colored garment, wore mala of tulasi beads, and put on the yellow U-shaped tilak on the forehead, running down up to the bridge of the nose. There was disturbance Okay. Very well. <clears throat> Who could believe that Monica Devi, born and bred in the lap of luxury, an aristocrat to the fingertip who went every two years to England had become a sannyasini and shaved her head. Indeed, she was a lady who had to be seen to be believed. And Krishna Prem was no less a marvel. He was perhaps the first European who became a Vaishnava, exchanged his English dress for the ochre-colored garment, wore mala of tulasi beads, and put on the yellow U-shaped tilak on the forehead, running down up to the bridge on the nose. After some time, Janendra Nata Chakravarti passed away. 
This marked the beginning of a new chapter in the life of Yashodama. She retired to the Himalayas with Krishna Prem and her daughter, daughter Moti Rani and established an ashram with a temple at Mirtula, some 18 miles from Almora. The place around the ashram was called Uttarabrindavan. In the temple of the ashram were installed two beautiful images of Krishna and Radha. In early days, a pujari and a Brahmin cook were engaged. But later, Krishna Prem himself became both, pujari and cook. Both the duties were performed by him in orthodox ritualistic manner. He also collected the provisions by begging. <clears throat> Krishna Prem's adherence to orthodox Vaishnava, Vaishnava practices was proverbial. What do you mean proverbial? It was, became famous. famous. Okay. Once a Bengali scientist and a friend said to him teasingly, if my widowed grandmother followed all this ritualistic procedure, I could not understand. I could understand. I could understand. Thank you. If my widowed grandmother followed all this ritualistic procedure, I could understand. But you have had such a different background. Back in your Cambridge days, you must have even eaten pl plenty of beef. How is it that you can observe such orthodox restrictions? Krishna Prem laughed and said, I believe that any self-imposed discipline, external or internal, is rather a good thing in this present age, when every kind of social an individual restraint is being discarded, thrown away. Besides, this is the path laid down by those who have gone before me and reached the goal. Jaiho. Who am I, just entering the path to say, I will do this and not that, accept this discipline, but not that? I accept the whole. Wow. Wow. And there's this element of parampara there. See, of not questioning what has come before, reflecting what has come before. Mother. Monica. Monica. Who is the guru? Yeah, Monica Devi, she went to Brindavan and took sannyas from which guru? Yes. Uh, Bala Krishna Goswami. Huh? Bala Krishna Goswami. Acharya Bala Krishna Goswami. Bala Krishna. Mm. This is also after 50s, 45. Yes. I know this is story of, yeah, go on. In course of time, two other English friends of Krishna Prem joined him at Mirtola. One was Madhavashisha, Madhavashish, who had come from England to serve as a ground engineer in the Second World War. When the war was over, he went for a brief holiday to the Himalayas. 
somehow he heard about Krishna Prem. He went to see him one day and never returned. <laughs> the other was Alec, Dr. R. D. Alexander. <laughs> who resigned his post as chief of Lucknow Hospital, accepted Ma as his guru, and became a permanent member of the Mitola Ashram. <clears throat> Krishna Prem had it completely surrendered himself at the feet of the Guru and thus opened himself to her grace, which descended upon him not as rain drips, but as it falls in torrents from heaven. Ma herself once gave two examples of his complete surrender to her. She said, when Gopala first wanted to accept me as his guru, I told him, I can accept you only if you promise me that even if you don't have any more spiritual experiences for the rest of your life, you won't give up. I knew, of course, that there was no chance of risk or failure if he gave the pledge. I only wanted him to bear it in mind that there, be, there must be no half-hearted acceptance, no condition, no bargaining, that he must have this or that. He gave me the pledge and he accepted me in toto, completely, just as a baby accepts his mother in spontaneous trust. The other instance <clears throat> was a miracle that happened to him. A miracle which could not have happened if his surrender to the Guru was not complete. An insect once bit his ankle while he was meditating outside. It got septic and Alec and two other doctors who were summoned could not control it. It grew worse and worse till it became so critical that an amputation of the leg was suggested. It was then that Ma said he could be cured if he stopped all medicine and took only Charanamrita, which is water touched by the foot, either of the Guru or the image of the Lord. In this case, the water touched by Ma's toe every time. He consented at once, ignoring the doctor's misgivings, and was cured miraculously. As to Krishna Prem's spiritual attachments, it should be enough to say that the Lord Balagopala had accepted him as his elder brother, Dada. Yashoda Ma had motherly affection towards Balagopala. She also loved Krishna Prem as her son. In this way, Krishna Prem was the elder brother of Balagopala. Malagopala not only had no objection to this relationship, he gladly accepted it, which is evident from what happened one night. One night, while Krishna Prem was asleep, 
he heard someone calling. Dada, Dada. With a start, he looked all around, but could see nothing, could, see, could not see anyone. Thinking that it was an illusion, he closed his eyes. But again, he heard that sweet call, Dada. This time it was quite clear that the call came from inside the temple. But there was no one inside the temple except Takura, the deity. Could it therefore be the call of Takura? He went near the temple again, he heard, Tada, I'm feeling cold. The window is open. <laughs> A current shook his body. Hurriedly, he opened the door of the temple, went in and closed the window. He covered Takur's body carefully with the quilt. While doing so, he said, Takura, you also feel cold? A streak of tears flowed down the cheeks of Takura. Krishna Prem was petrified. He gasped out, Ha Takura, and wept. But controlling himself somehow, <laughs> he wiped the tears of Takura with his Parivasha, outer garment, Bahir Vash. Takura slept, but there was no sleep for Krishna Prem. Takura had called him Dada, as if through this one word he had poured all his affection upon him. Could his small heart contain it? It was running out incessantly through his eyes in the form of tears. There was no reason for Krishna Prem's tears, but why did Takura weep? Krishna Prem had simply asked him, do you also feel cold? To understand this, <clears throat> it is necessary to understand the real nature of Takura. Takura, in his innermost self, is love, Prem. Love or Prem is the highest rasa, transcendental relish. So he is called rasa, raso vaisa. He is both rasa and rasika, the enjoyer of rasa. The highest rasa he enjoys is the love, Prem or rather the loving service, Prem Seva, of his bhakta. Therefore, the relationship between him and his bhakta is integral. He is incomplete without his bhakta. In his innermost and real self, he realizes himself fully only in relation to the loving service of his bhakta. His Siddha bhaktas serve him directly in his eternal abode, the transcendental Vrindava. Sadaka bhaktas, who have not yet fully realized him, do not have access to him in transcendental Vrindava. But Takura, in order to satisfy his ever-growing desire to relish the loving service of his sadhaka bhaktas, comes down to their plane in the form of his image. His descent in the form of his image is both an act of grace and self-fulfillment. For in this form, he also fulfills himself by enjoying the loving service of his sadhaka bhaktas. The bhakta bathes him, 
feeds him, decorates him, and sings or dances before him with love. And he accepts his service with love and enjoys it. He enjoys it because he has real craving for it. No doubt, craving implies incompleteness. And the great Lord, who creates and destroys the universe, who is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent, all-powerful, all-present, and all-knowing, the Lord has no want, no craving, no incompleteness in him. But in this form, although he enjoys his aishwarya or lordliness, he does not enjoy the highest rasa that comes from the loving service of his bhaktas. <clears throat> in order to enjoy this rasa, he limits himself and assumes a human form. In this form, his ashwarya, his lordliness, is completely eclipsed by his madhurya, sweetness. It's completely replaced or covered by his madhurya. And he actually feels hungry and thirsty, cold, and warmth, and craves for all those things which his devotees offer him. If the, devotees, if the devotee says or does anything which is in conformity with this form, he relishes it to the extreme. If the devotee says or does anything which is not in conformity with it, he feels hurt in the innermost and the tendermost corner of his heart. Krishna Prem had hurt him by asking whether he also felt cold, and the only way in which he could answer his question adequately was by shedding tears. Who could assess the value of the tears of Thakur better than Krishna Pen? He tore off the corner of his bahirvash with which he had wiped his tears and put it inside a silver amulet, which he wore close to his heart all the rest of his life. This is an incredible scene. Yes. He put his clothes on the silver with the tear of Taku. Mm -hmm. So the Lord is the relisher of pleasure. He enters the deity to receive the service of the bhaktas. He cannot receive the service of the bhaktas when he's in his transcendental form. So he enters the deities to receive the pleasure that the, the service, the pleasure that can be given through the service of the bhaktas. If they do the service correctly, he is pleased. If it's incorrect, he cries tears, real tears, material tears. When he enters material form, he's only looking for sweetness.
And his desire for sweetness is so strong that he's actually feeling hungry. The deity is hungry. The stomach of the deity is grumbling. <laughs> he's thirsty. He's cold and warm. And one time when, um, when Krishna Prem has to ask him, are you cold? He's done an offense to the deity because he did not know, he did not feel that he was cold and do it automatically. And for that reason, the deity cried the tear. <clears throat> do you want to comment, Gurudev? It's so complicated. So loving. Not complications. <laughs> this is love. DT only talk with when there is an intense love. Mm. Jesus say, I see my father. Intense love and deep relation makes you to connect with divine. Hmm. It's not that Indian has the only right to do this. Hmm. Western body has no right to do this. And I know <laughs> Prem is so great. He's a great Mahatma. All Indians and everyone is loving to him. That time, only he was the only one Western born who was the saint. Now, these days, many saintly person you see, but that time, only one person in white body. Krishna. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Do you know him quite well? I think I know him. <laughs> I listen to him. I know him. He was very connected with Radha Raman temple also. He has an Almora ashram. Near Almora is near Nainita. Wow. Okay. This is a true story. It is that talking to you. I'm cold. Mm. I need this to eat. I need this. Wow. <laughs> I'm cold. I am feeling cold. You are wearing. I am not covering. <laughs> Window is open. Please come, Dada. He said, Dada to him. Dada means brother. Oh, my brother, please help me. Mm. Wow. Thank you. Stop. Yeah, maybe stop because uh, not a big time. Radha Monkey Jai. Radha Monkey Jai, Gurudev Ki Jai. Two prestigious are here. <laughs> I inspired them to listen from you again. Please sit Udhav and call them and they will like to listen. They are living in room number. A1. A1. You have to know Udhav, introduce to Udhav. And you have to listen yeah. this past time. Yeah. Very well, with pleasure. Yeah, yeah he's ready to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I can repeat this story. It's a beautiful. Yeah. yeah. How one of a Western body is giving respect to his mother. Mm -hmm. He said, I will take initiation only from you. In order to give to you. <laughs> eh? She takes a sanyati to Sorry. give to him. I turned off the microphone. A bit of a, but you can hear through the computer. Yeah. What? Say yeah. again. I said, uh, she took sanyati so that he could get diksha. Yeah, you see this? Because he said, I will only take from you. Then she said, okay, but then I have to take first. <laughs> and what is the teaching of mother? Yeah. 
What a beautiful thing. This again you have to repeat. What mother? Eh? Unconditional love. That's the beauty of mother. Mother means, mother means uh, that who teach unconditional love. She is the teacher of unconditional love. He said, this is the condition I will give you, but this unconditional love, you have to practice. Mm -hmm. That's true. Initiative. 